Hey, it's your friend Choice CJ here, and I am happy to be bringing you guys my week 5 battle of the UBL. <laughs> Sorry, I almost said week 6. I just played my week 6 match. Obviously, you guys won't see that until next week. Uh, but this is not versus my week 6 opponent. It is instead versus Silver Beanie, coach of the Crystal Palo Sands. Link is down in the description below, as well as the links for all the other coaches in the league. And I played this like 5 days ago, so I'm hoping that I can recall most of it pretty well. Uh, if not, then I'll uh, just watch it and then start from the, from the beginning and do this video over again. Uh, but if you did miss my team builder, I do recommend you guys go check it out. Let's quickly go over the team that I have brought. I brought a uh, Rocky Helmet Physically Defensive Necrozma with Stealth Rocks. I brought an Assault Vest Diggersby. I brought an Assault Vest Heliolisk. brought a Life Orb Pursuit Sneasel. I brought a Baton Pass Slow Pony. And then I brought an Offensive Shookaberry Heat Tran. And Silver Beanie has brought Tapu Koko, Lando his Umbreon, his Arcanine, his Mega Metagem, and his Gyarados. So, a few things I'm uh, happy to see on the bench. First and foremost is definitely that Raichu, that Alolan Raichu in combination with the Electric Terrain will be extremely hard to deal with. I don't have a lot of great counters for that. So, the fact that I don't have to deal with it is really good. It allows me to uh, not play so carefully with my Diggersby and my Heliolisk. I can, you know, use them you know, as a sack if I need or leave it in on a predicted uh, switch out or something like that. Um, knowing that I can rely on the other one to uh, either one shot or two shot the Tapu Koko, so that's really nice. Uh, happy to see no Golbat. Golbat is a pretty major issue for my Lopunny, um, because it doesn't have a really good move for hitting it, uh, so that's quite nice. Uh, he does have double Intimidate uh, between Arcanine and Gyarados, so that's pretty annoying uh, for my Lopunny. He could uh, be like a bulky Gyarados, like a physically defensive uh, Rocky Helmet does make sense on Gyarados, so we'll have to see if he chooses to bring a set like that or not. Umbreon is something I'm pretty scared to see. I don't have a lot of amazing ways of dealing with it, and I do presume that it is Fizz Death because it's his best way of dealing with Sneasel, um, and to some extent Necrozma. Like, Necrozma just doesn't deal well with Umbreon that much at all, regardless of whether it's Fizz Death or it is Bidef. Um, like, regardless of whether Necrozma is physically offensive or specially offensive. Like, it's best move to hit it, I guess, is, like, Brick Break or, like, a Bug-type move such as X-Scissor or Signal Beam. Uh, but Umbreon is, is thick enough to take, uh, those sorts of moves and go for, like, Wish Protect and stuff like that. You know, especially if he has, like, Toxic, he can just go for Toxic and then Wish Protect me down, so that's pretty annoying. Um, but yeah, otherwise, Lando, totally scary, don't have Switch-Ins to. Metacham, at least I do have one Switch-In to it, but still totally scary if I lose my Necrozma. Uh, and across my, I have a feeling it's going to end up being pressured uh, in this game by a lot of his mods. So uh, I need to play super carefully with it, otherwise I risk getting swept by one of his uh, one of his mods. So uh, I'm actually uh, recording this before I get my match recorded. Uh, big shoutouts to AA Round Two Four Twenty for recording my match this week. I'm just going to watch it on my 3DS uh, because I uh, I've got some plans tomorrow and I don't really want to. Uh, to uh, do like a whole bunch of recording and everything while uh, I have my plans. So uh, hopefully it doesn't make a big difference in terms of the recording. Like if the recording is a different speed than the battle, it's going to make it a little awkward and I'll have to redo it. So we'll see. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Uh, I'm actually going to lead off with my Necrozma. Uh, reason being, I do want to prioritize those rocks really quickly because if I can get up rocks to hit the Gyarados and the Arcanine, uh, then I can basically uh, 2 it KO both of them with uh, my Heatran. And I also thought there was a non-zero chance that he would lead with Metacham, but as you can see, he's actually going to lead his Tapu Koko. Uh, so this is already not an amazing situation for me. Uh, he's most likely either going to Volt Switch or U-Turn, so I don't really want to even switch out here. I'm hoping it's U-Turn because I am physically defensive, and he is most likely some sort of like a specially leading set. Because that seems to be what he has been favoring so far this season. Luckily he does go for U-Turn, and that works out to my benefit because I do get a little bit of Rocky Helmet. Uh, and I am actually just going to go straight for a knockoff. Uh, because if he was like a Choice Scarf type of Coco or something, which he has run so far this season, it would be really nice to get rid of that and uh, prevent him from outspeeding my Lopunny in the late game. So I do go for that knockoff. The Umbreon comes in. I do knock off his leftovers, which is still very nice. Like, Umbreon with leftovers is so annoying. Um, and I do just go for my rocks right away. And he goes for a foul play. This is also going to work to my benefit because I do hit it with Rocky Helmet. And then on this turn, I am going to go for a Moonlight just to get up to as much HP as possible before switching out. Um... And so, you know, I again, my Necrozma is super pressured. I have to be really, really careful with it. Leaving it in versus this Umbreon is a pretty big risk, but he does go for a second foul play. He hasn't shown anything like Toxic up to this point. Uh, so that's nice for me that uh, my Necrozma, you know, it's around like 60, 65% HP or so. Uh, it's going to be around to fight another day. So I do swap out into my Heatran. 
Uh, expecting him mostly to wish, uh, because he is at that range of HP where he should wish. Uh, but he actually goes for Toxic. So I'm very lucky I didn't leave my Necrozma in, because having my Necrozma Toxic would not be good. Um, and I do just go for a Toxic of my own, because if I can hit this Umbreon, again, it would make sense for him to stay in and go for, like, Wish or something, right? Um, so, like, they figure there's like, a decent chance that he would get hit with this Toxic, but he does switch out into his Gyarados. So I don't really... <laughs> Like, uh, leaving in my Gyarados versus this thing is not amazing, uh, but I, I kind of have to for a few reasons. One, if he Dragon Dances and I switch out, I pretty much lose. Uh, two, uh, staying in sort of makes sense if I am expecting this thing to be bulkier, uh, which I kind of am. And even if he's not bulky, even if he is, uh, like, uh, attack invested, uh, he could be adamant instead of jolly, so I could outspeed. Uh, so as you can see, he goes for Waterfall. I did do the Calc, and in case he was jolly... Like, I figured, like, if he's, like, uh, if he's not, like, a, a life orb or other attack boosting item, uh, Waterfall won't kill me and I'll be able to kill with HP Electric. But it turns out he is life orb. I get a pretty low roll and I live on 1 HP, which is really lucky. So I'm able to take out the Gyarados. Lando comes in and I don't really have a choice but to sack my Heatran to it. And he is actually going to U-turn, knock me out, and then go into Coco. But the fact that he goes into Coco is actually pretty nice for me because it gives me a free switch into my Diggers B. And I basically collect a kill with Return here, so... Uh, I know that there was like a, a lot going on in those sequence of plays. Hopefully, you guys understood, uh, you know, the play there. Yeah, you know, the, that showdown versus Gyarados versus Heatran uh, was was pretty crucial. The fact that we were able to live with the role was quite nice. Um, so anyway, I do go for the return. I'm trying to figure out what it is that he's going to sack, but he actually likes to go into the Umbreon, which is amazing for me because we already saw that this thing has Toxic. And it's basically the only thing on his team that has super effective damage for Necrozma. Like, even if Foul Play can't do that much to damage versus Necrozma, like, Necrozma just gets so pressured with time uh, by that Foul Play. And, yeah, like, if he doesn't have Toxic on anything else on his team, he has no good way of dealing with Necrozma at this point. So the fact that he sacked that off, I think, was probably a little bit of a mistake, um, so which is quite nice for me. So, anyway, he comes in with Lando. I'm once again in a situation where I don't have a switch into this thing. Uh, I do the Calc. I should live an EQ. Uh, but he actually goes for a superpower and is able to knock me out. Um, so my Diggersby does go down. Like I said, it was a it was a play I was willing to make because I did have my Heliolus, which can still deal with the Tapu Coco um, if I need. And like Low Pony, if it's not a Scarf Coco, Low Pony can outspeed and revenge it. I wanted to go into my Sneasel because I can kill with Icicle Crash, but on the off chance that he's a Scarf instead of a Yachi Berry variant, I didn't want to go into my Sneasel and then end up losing it for nothing. Um, so. I decided I would go into my Necrozma and go for a Moonlight here, as he, uh, once again goes for an Earthquake. Um, and so, I don't know if this, like, made me think more that it was, uh, Scarf or not. Regardless of what I thought, he does just go for a knockoff now. It's gonna get rid of my Rocky Helmet, which is a little bit annoying. And I'm gonna hit it up for a Psychic. Because there's no way he can 2-K me with any move. Uh, Psychic actually does a, a pretty small amount of damage. Uh, I, like, didn't do the Calc immediately, but it occurred to me that this might be an Assault Vest, uh, uh, Landorus, given, uh, the, the amount of damage that that took. I guess Lando with the Assault Vest sort of makes sense, because that allows him to deal with Heliolisk relatively well. Uh, I don't know what other special attackers it would be really nice for. I guess, like, Venomoth would be kind of nice for, uh, because it can take a Bug Buzz or a Sludge Bomb, uh, from a plus one Venomoth relatively easily. You know, despite the fact that it double resists, the, you know, or that it resists both stabs. Uh, you know, I do have that Tinted Lens option on Venomoth. But anyway, I do go for a second Psychic here, and it does live, so that definitely confirms that it's an Assault Vest variant, given the amount of damage that he's doing. So, I'm just going to get myself up to max HP in preparation uh, for taking this next uh, EQ, and I'm going to try and knock him out with a knockoff. If, if knockoff makes more sense than Psychic, because if for some reason he swaps out, I'd love to knock off whatever item he has. Um, so... Necrozma is going to be able to pick up a kill versus this Landorus, which is really, really nice. So we've killed the Umbreon, we've killed the uh, Landorus now. Uh, he still has Metacham, Tapu Koko, Arcanine. Uh, the Gyarados did get eliminated as well, so he has three Mons left. I think at this point we have five... No, we have four Mons, because we sacked off Heatran and we sacked off Diggersby. So four to three, still anybody's game. You just go into his Arcanine. Um, and so I decided that I'm just going to Moonlight, because I kind of want to scout out what he wants to do. Uh, but I forgot that I actually EV'd this thing to outspeed a zero speed Arcanine, and it turns out that's exactly what he's rocking. Um, and then he goes for the Flare Blitz. So I'm actually a little bit confused by this Flare Blitz because it does uh, 81 damage there, which made me think he had a little bit of attack investment because uh, uh, like an impish uh, Arcanine with no attack investment 
does not uh, do 81 damage with Flare Blood. So I'm still a little bit unsure as to what the mystery was there. Um, but then I go for a Psychic, and going for a Psychic is a huge misplay. Uh, because he does go for the Flare Blitz once again. And uh, the, the two turns of Flare Blitz damage is able to put him, uh, put me in range of dying to a move from this Metacham, which is really, really crappy. Like, he probably has, like, Ice Punch or some sort of coverage move, which can one-shot me, uh, which stinks. But I think I'm in a position here where I can't lose the game, so that's pretty nice. Um, and we'll talk about how uh, how I'm in, a, uh, in, like, a checkmate position here in just a moment. So he does go into his Metacham. He mega evolves, and he clicks Poison Jab, and he's able to kill my... Uh, Necrozma. Now I'm going to go into my, my Mega Lopunny. I'm not expecting him to have any sort of bulk on this Metacham, and so the combination of Fake Out plus Return will be able to take this thing out. And so, uh, Fake Out was definitely the play. Like, if he wants to switch into Tapu Koko, uh, like, you know, it, either as a Sack or because it's a Scarfer, um, like, the way that this works out is, um, like, he goes into Tapu Koko, I Sack my Sneasel, uh, to whatever move the Tapu Koko wants to go for, and then I go into my Heliolisk. Heliolisk either takes two from uh, Tapu Koko in t uh, two shots with Hyper Voice, and then he goes back into his Metacham and uh, kills my uh, Heliolisk with Drain Punch, and then my Lopunny comes back in and goes for Fake Out plus uh, Return. Uh, if he decides to uh, swap into Metacham, uh, with uh, if he brought in his Coco and then decided to swap back into Metacham, my uh, Heliolisk would two shot. Uh, with Hyper Voice, and then that leaves uh, just his Koku there, and I can kill with uh, the combination of Lopunny and Sneasel. Uh, as played, you saw I did end up killing the Metacham with Fake Out plus Return, and then the Tabu Koku comes in, reveals that it's Scarfed, goes for Dazzling Gleam, but uh, it's not able to kill my Lopunny, and then my Lopunny is able to kill the Tabu Koku with Return, and that is going to give us a comfortable 3-0 victory versus Silver Beanie. So, uh, you know, I say comfortable, but... Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that went my way in that battle, so, like, the fact that I was able to eliminate the Gyarados so early was huge, because I didn't really have any way of dealing with it. Um, but I still stand by my play, just because there was, uh, the, I, I couldn't have switched out there reasonably, right? Like, because, like I said, it was, uh, an auto-lose if he Dragon Danced in that situation. Um, I also thought that there was a reasonable chance he went for Earthquake instead of Waterfall. Um, because I do have the dry skin Heliolisk in the back. Um, but, you know, the the fact that he, you know, he could have gone for Earthquake, but I had the Sugar Berry to negate that, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So, um, I felt pretty safe versus EQ. And again, if he wasn't Life Orb, then Waterfall, uh, did not have a chance to kill. And Earthquake definitely didn't have a chance to kill. Uh, so I think, like, you know, four times out of five that I, you know, survived that comfortably. And I'm able to make the KO with the Hidden Power Electric. Uh, but it did turn out that he was, uh, like, not only was he, uh, not defensive, he was jolly. Not only did he, uh, like, you know, have that, uh, offensive investment, but he also was life orb. Uh, so, like, I think most situations there, I would have been able to, uh, like, that, that would have been a play in my favor. Uh, but it turns out, like, it was a play that was in his, his favor, and I just got the roll, so that was very nice. Uh, and then, yeah, like, I got really lucky because I misplayed so bad without Necrozma versus the Arcanine. Uh, uh, Necrozma could have 6 would or not 6 0 but it could have cleaned the rest of that game because he didn't have anything to hit it hard enough, right? Um, but the fact that I let it go get so weak versus Arcanine was a really, really bad uh, decision. Uh, but it worked out because uh, I ended up not uh, losing any more Pokemon. Uh, I was able to clean up the rest of the game with Lopunny. And like I described, there was, uh, uh, you know, I had, I had lots of options for, for playing out that end game uh, once he was down to just Metacham in Tapu Koko. So. Uh, the fact that we played the endgame pretty well, I think, made me pretty happy. Like, there was no way that that, tap, uh, that Scarf Tapu Koko was going to be able to clean once it was his last Pokemon, because I did have the Assault Fest, tapu, uh, the Assault Fest uh, Healy list for dealing with Tapu Koko, and I was going to be able to two-shot with, uh, with, uh, with uh, Hyper Voice. So, yeah, uh, maybe comfortable wasn't quite the right word. <laughs> uh, like, 3-0 is like a, it's like a good win, right? Like, that's a good win that adds to your differential. Um, so, like, that's, I mean, in that way, it's cushy and it's comfortable, but the gameplay itself was super tense, uh, and totally could have gone another way, uh, if I didn't have some luck in my favor. So, big shout out to Silver Beanie for putting up a good fight, uh, closer than the 3-0 score suggests. You know, I'm very grateful to, uh, end up with a, a, a good score like that to give my differential a boost. And we are going to improve to 4-1 and one on the season. Uh, so, at this point, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm... Not trying to count my chickens before they hatch, but I think we're setting ourselves up well to uh, close out this season with a playoff berth. 
Uh, we have five games to go. We've completed five games. We have five games to go. Um, I think probably six and four is good enough to make playoffs um, this season. There's even a non-zero chance that, that five and five is good enough, but I don't want to go five and five because that means I go one and four in my final five weeks. Uh, but if uh, somehow I just go two and three, that gives me a six and four record, and I think that'll comfortably get me into playoffs. And in uh, Pokemon, I don't think it really matters if you're the one seed or the four seed, unless somehow there's like a bye week involved. Uh, but otherwise, like, as long as you get into playoffs, I don't care if you're in first seed or last seed. Uh, I just want to make playoffs. And so I think we're in a good spot now where we can, uh, yeah, just, you know, be, be you know, we, we, we need to play well. But uh, if we don't play 100%, uh, I think our early season success gives us a little room for flexibility in the later half of the season. Um, and I'm going to need that because I have a couple of really tough battles coming up. I have Styx next week from the Token Minorities. Go check out uh, his link in the description and uh, the whole TTM channel, which is really fantastic. I have to play Uzi still, who is the Season 1 champion. Uh, I have to play uh, a couple other guys as well. I still need to play uh, Joe. Uh, I need to play uh, Root and Irish Emeralds. Root and Irish Emeralds are, are fairly high up in the standings. I think they're both in playoff position. Uh, Joe is uh, just on the edge of playoff position. Like basically, there's a big tie for like last uh, like a last playoff spot right now. Like there's a lot of people who are two and two, um, and I'm not sure like who won in week five and who lost. So I don't know how the playoff positioning is being adjusted. Uh, but basically, they're all right there neck and neck. And I think Joe is just like slightly on the lower end due to his differential. Uh, but that's a scary matchup for me because he is Zygarde 50, and as we saw versus Leo, Zygarde uh, is very good versus my team. So, um, you know, put a Zygarde 50 in front of me, which has even more bulk. So I'm really glad that I have the lead that I do in this division, uh, the Emma Stone division, uh, because I'm probably going to end up uh, giving up a lot of that lead in the next, uh, next few weeks. So, uh, again, as long as we finish in playoffs, I don't really care. Uh, I definitely want to make playoffs. So anyway, that's going to do it for me. Make sure you check back to the channel next week for our match versus Styx. It's definitely going to be a good one. I think his team is really scary, has a really good matchup versus me, and he's a very good battler. So hope you're looking forward to it. Make sure you drop a like on the video and you drop a sub, so that way you stay up to date on all of my latest and greatest Pokemon and gaming content. So until the next time, I will see you guys later.